Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, Windows and Mirrors, which is a term inspired by the research of Dr. Rudine Sims Bishop. I am Ronnie Curry, Associate Editor, Books for Youth at Booklist. My pronouns are he and him. And before we begin, I will go over some technical details. Links to today's slide presentation and title list were included in a reminder email that you received from Zoom one hour ago. If you want to download them, you can open that email, scroll to the bottom, and click on the link links located there. You can also download the slides and title list by copying the URLs on this screen into your web browser. If you have any trouble accessing these materials, please contact us at webinars at booklistonline.com. If you're in the audience, you are in listen-only mode, but we do welcome any questions that you might have. So on the bottom of your screen is a toolbar, and there is a section for Q&A in there. If you have a question or if you need technical assistance, just click Q&A and type your message into the box that pops up. We will do our best to respond to all of the tech-related questions, and we can pass along all other questions to the panelists, and they'll have a chance to follow up with you after the webinar. Last but not least, Booklist offers closed captioning on all of our webinars. To enable or disable captions on your screen, please look for and click the live transcript icon on the toolbar that I mentioned earlier. From there, you can select show or hide subtitles from the menu that appears. If you choose to enable subtitles, you can adjust the size of the captions at any time by selecting subtitle settings. And today we will have the pleasure of hearing from Callie Flagg, Children's Library Marketing Associate at Simon & Schuster Children's Publishing, Sam Devada, Senior Associate of Marketing and Publicity at Tundra Press, Michaela Steven, Marketing Coordinator at Second Story Press, and Sarah Dunn, Publicity Manager at Anik Press. And first up, we are going to hear from Callie Flagg. Callie is a Children's Library Marketing Associate on the Education and Library team at Simon & Schuster. For all four years of middle school, she won most books checked out at her library. So you could say her career is the ultimate expression of her childhood ambitions. When she's not reading, she is usually running in Central Park, attempting a new recipe, or following random dogs down the street. Thank you for being here today, Callie. Thank you so much. So yeah, like you guys just heard, uh, my name is Kaylee and I'm a marketing associate here on the Simon & Schuster Children's team. And thank you so much for joining us today for my portion of the Windows and Mirrors presentation. And thank you to all the other panelists. I'm really excited to hear about your books. So diversity means something different to everyone and making sure each and every reader can find themselves in our stories is a huge priority of ours. In the following slides, I'm going to discuss just some of our many titles that portray a broad range of experiences and points of view. So Deneen Milner Books is a love letter to children of color who deserve to see their beauty and humanity in the most remarkable form of entertainment on the planet, books. These stories celebrate the everyday beauty of being a little human of color, like the joyful Stella in Stella Keeps the Sun Up, or not so little human, like the teens grappling with their racially divided town in other side of the tracks. Impossible Moon mirrors a heartwarming grandparent-grandchild relationship, particularly the love that they hold toward one another at the twilight of a grandparent's life. Lessons on space and celestial events draw an obvious connection to astronomy and STEM, while Mabel's journey encourages readers to lose themselves in their imagination and push past limits to metaphorically reach for the stars. In Turning, a former ballet prodigy grapples with the loss of her legs after a devastating accident. Only it may not be an accident after all, but it will take all of Jeannie's strength to stand up for herself and her future. And we have several other books with main characters of color that are not published under Deneen Miller. And I've highlighted a few recent and upcoming titles here. On Yucca and the Academy of the Sun highlights black hair and its figurative and literal magic. Of course, we're always excited about anything Jason Reynolds puts out, and his recent Ain't Burned All the Bright always deserves a mention. This joyful, terrifying, heartbreaking mashup of prose and art captures what it's like to be Black in America right now and is a must read for all. And Love Radio is one of our most exciting debuts this summer. It's a heartwarming, thought provoking romance that celebrates Black love, music, and the beauty of growing up. 
Our Salam Reads imprint was founded in 2016. We actually just recently celebrated its anniversary and it celebrates joy, vibrancy, and variety in stories of Muslim life. Salam Reads publishes books for all ages. And here we have two of our recent picture books, Abdul's Story and The Katha Chest. In The Encouraging Abdul Story, Abdul learns it's not only just okay to make mistakes, but mistakes are necessary in order to learn. And a sweet tale about a young girl and her grandmother, the Katha chest connects to the universal feeling of a grandparent's love while depicting the uniquely important role grandparents play in Indian culture. Salam Reads also has great middle grade and teen titles. Author Hena Khan's most recent book, Zara's Rules for Record-Breaking Fun, focuses on the titular Zara, a young Muslim girl attempting to break a Guinness world record in order to maintain her queen bee status. Amina's Song, which shares the beauty of Pakistan and its people, recently won the Asian Pacific American Award for Children's Literature. And Love from Mecca to Medina is a magical, romantic follow-up to the smash hit Love from A to Z that we've all been eagerly awaiting. May is National, American, National Asian American and Pacific Islander Month, and I wanted to touch on some of our wonderful titles with AAPI characters and authors. These sweet picture books focus on inclusivity and kindness, a value evident in little Amy Wu as she tries her best to make the new kid who has come all the way from China feel welcome. And Little Seed by Benson Shum introduces us to a little seed with a big wish to give the world a hug, which is something that we could all use right now. I also wanted to call out two new great middle grade series we're launching this summer, Leah Park and the Missing Jewel and Zachary Ying and the Dragon Emperor. We're so excited for these and I hope you guys are too. Leah Park just wants to be a normal kid, but her parents, and maybe destiny, say otherwise, especially when she learns that she's the only hope to recover a powerful lost jewel. And Zachary Ying discovers he's the descendant of the first emperor of China and must journey across China to heist artifacts and defeat figures from history and myth so he can seal the underworld before its spirits flood out and destroy the mortal realm. <clears throat> Pei Jing, our hero in all four quarters of the moon, could use a hug like that, like Little Seed. Her family has just moved to Australia and she's trying desperately to keep her family tightly knit while figuring out how to deal with the uncertainties of her own new world. In New From Here by Kelly Yang, she tackles something we all know far too well, the COVID-19 pandemic. Recently uprooted from his life in Hong Kong and moved to California, Knox endures racism, anxiety, and separation from the rest of his family, not to mention COVID itself. Knox bravely stands up in the face of all these challenges, learning to love his own uniqueness. I also want to mention my life, growing up Asian in America, one of our most exciting upcoming titles. This groundbreaking essay collection, edited by renowned journalist Su Chin Pak, is both a celebration and a call to action. <clears throat> Next up is a snapshot of just a few of our titles that focus on Latinx characters and stories. We have new and exciting picture books like John Parra's Growing an Artist, which illustrates the essential and gorgeous work of landscape architects, as well as the beautiful bond between father and son. I also wanna point out the latest in our amazing Charlie Hernandez series, a thrilling adventure series following a young Hispanic boy as he discovers his heritage and unlocks his supernatural powers, all while fighting the forces of darkness. And for older readers, we have award winners like How Moon Fuentes Fell in Love with the Universe, which recently won a Pura Bell Prey Award. This irresistible romance follows Moon as she spends her summer on a road trip across the country, discovering love and profound truths about the universe along her way. This is Why They Hate Us is just the gay, love triangly, heart pounding romance we never knew we needed, but with a deep undertone of emotion and reflection on the realities of being out as a teenager. LGBTQ representation is very close, for all ages, is very close to our hearts here at Simon Schuster Ed Library. So here are a few of our hilarious and moving titles. This Little Rainbow is a colorful, joyful biography of some of the most important figures in LGBTQ history, full of age appropriate facts and bold illustrations. Big Wig is perfect for any fans of Drag Race and their kids, and teaches all of us about the importance of dress up in a child's confidence and that dressing up can sometimes reveal our truest selves. So This Is Ever After, a stunning retelling of Arthurian legend, is just the kind of swoony, magical love teenagers obsess over, and She Gets the Girl is the Gay, She's All That remake we've been dying to read. And here are some more teen titles with LGBTQ characters coming out this summer, 
We could not be more excited for these. If you want spooky suspense, Bad Things Happen Here is perfect. And after all that nail biting, Blaine for the win, a lighthearted story of Blaine's race to get his boyfriend back and also win student body president, will calm you right back down. The Forest Hills Bootleg Society takes us back to a simpler time, 2005, and follows 14 girls who stumble upon a risque anime at their local gas station. They're horrified, fascinated, and struck with a brilliant idea, burn the DVD and sell it to boys, which of course starts a drama that will test the girls and their love for each other. May is also Jewish American Heritage Month, and here we have just a handful of our books with Jewish main characters and authors. Try It is the story of Frida Kaplan, a produce saleswoman in 1950s Los Angeles. To compete with the men trying to outsell her, she introduced foods that were fresh and unusual for the time, like snap peas, mangoes, watermelon, and more. She brought a whole world of food to the general population, and they're all illustrated here in this gorgeous picture book. And if you're in the mood for something a bit light and funny, check out Giddy and Kvetch, a hilarious tale about the perky Giddy and her curmudgeonly friend Kvetch. The Last Words We Said, a heart-wrenching YA story of love and friendship, was recently noted as a Sydney Taylor Young Adult Honor book. And for slightly older readers, See You Yesterday, a hilarious and heartfelt Groundhog Day-esque tale, follows Barrett as she attempts to discover why she's trapped in a time loop and falls for the boy she's trapped with. Those Summer Nights sees former soccer star Hannah rebuilding from a shattered ankle, shattered Olympic dreams, and a string of bad decisions, all while judging a juggling a blossoming love triangle. Simon Schuster has a long history of amplifying voices about characters who are living with, but are not defined by their disability. For our little readers, we have the problem with pajamas. Pajamas scratch you, they zap you, and they trap you. Cody's sensory issues make bedtime tough, but her dad has come up with a soft, cuddly plan to help her out in this charming book about the unique ways we all process feelings and sensations. The publication of Sharon Draper's Out of My Mind in 2012 made huge waves in its unflinching, honest depiction of Melody, an 11-year-old with cerebral palsy, and the follow-up in 2021, Out of My Heart, was just as impactful. Melody is determined to find a place where she can be herself, and she has her heart set on a camp for differently abled kids. Through first crushes, first zip lines, and first campfires, Melody discovers how brave and strong she truly is. In Etta Invincible, Etta, who lives with hearing loss, wishes to be bold and daring, but she spends most of the day alone in her thoughts. When the neighbor's golden retriever disappears, though, Etta steps into a world of mystery and magic to be the hero she's always dreamed of. And this summer, we're particularly looking forward to Butt, Sandwich, and Tree, a charming mystery about brotherhood, sports, and life on the autism spectrum. Kaleidoscope Reads is Simon & Schuster's home for all the titles above and so many more. Dedicated to promoting diverse books, the site hosts title lists, reading guides, and everything else you could possibly need to find the perfect story. And that's all from me, so please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. I hope you enjoyed getting to hear about all of our wonderful titles, and I'm looking forward to hearing more myself. Thank you. Thank you, Kaylee. Next up, we will hear from Sam Devada. Sam is the Senior Associate Marketing and Publicity at Penguin Random House Canada, Canada Young Readers. She has a publishing certificate from Ryerson University and can most often be found behind the scenes on the Penguin Team Canada social media accounts. Outside of work, Sam spends a lot of time talking about YA books and pop punk bands, often at the same time. Take it away, Sam. Thanks, Ronnie. Hi, all. My name is Sam, and I'm the Senior Associate of Marketing and Publicity at Tundra Book Group. Our team is physically located in Canada, but we publish authors and illustrators from around the world, and our books are available across North America. You can order all of our titles from your Penguin Random House reps or through your favorite wholesaler. I'm super excited to share this list of titles with you, so let's jump right in. Honani Hula Warrior is an empowering celebration of identity, acceptance, and Hawaiian culture based on a true story. Honani is a young child who has always felt in between. She doesn't see herself as a girl or a boy and is happy to be in the middle. But not everyone agrees, especially when Honani tries to join her school's hula chant performance, a traditionally all-male troupe. Not only does this picture book, beautifully illustrated by Mika Song, celebrate Hawaiian culture and traditions, 
but debut author Heather Gale also explores gender fluidity in a child-friendly way. Honani is proud to be herself, even when others are not so sure about her, and her strength will inspire anyone who has ever felt like an outsider. The book includes back matter with information about the real Honani, including details on the documentary based on her life called A Place in the Middle, plus the Hawaiian traditions portrayed in the story. We also have a discussion guide to help further the conversation. One of our most lauded picture books of 2021, On the Trapline is a gorgeous, heartfelt story of an Indigenous boy and his grandfather. A boy and his Mosham, his grandpa, take a trip to the trapline where Mosham grew up. A trapline is where people hunt and live off the land, and the journey there inspires the boy to imagine what life was like generations ago, a life that appears to be both different from and similar to his life now. Memory, imagination, and intergenerational connection all play a part in the story from award-winning author David A. Robertson, who introduces readers to some Indigenous traditions, including select Cree phrases. Illustrator Julie Flett is also Indigenous, and her collage art conveys the importance of nature and the natural world to Indigenous peoples. It's no wonder On the Trapline won the Governor General's Literary Award for Illustrated Books, one of Canada's most prestigious awards, last year. And don't forget there's an activity kit available that includes recommendations for other picture books by Indigenous creators. If one son is lucky, then 10 must be great luck. In 10 Little Dumplings, we meet a family in Tainan with 10 sons. But if you look closely, you'll also see a daughter growing up in the shadow of her brothers and determined to create her own path in the world. Based on a short film made by author Larissa Fan and inspired by her father's family in Taiwan, Ten Little Dumplings looks at the way girls are treated and the ways they can break free of their societal and familial expectations. The folklore, cultural ties, and auspicious red cover make it a great pick for Lunar New Year, but this story will resonate all year round, especially with people who feel unseen. With illustrations from up-and-coming Taipei artist Cindy Womb, this is a timely tale of a girl who persisted and offers an inspirational message of hope and girl power. There's an activity kit available, including instructions on how to make your own felted dumpling, and make sure to watch the video demo starring author Larissa Fan herself. Kim's mom is tough, and Kim prides herself on being tough too. She doesn't need to wear a hat to keep her ears warm, and she can make soup all by herself, even when the stove isn't working. But when Kim doesn't have the money to cover a school trip, she and her mom learn that sometimes being tough means showing vulnerability and asking for help. Not only is Tough Like Mom a tender exploration of a mother-daughter relationship, it's also an example of economic diversity, a subject that author Lana Button handles with tact and compassion, while Carmen Mock's gentle illustrations show us what's going on behind the scenes. Kim and her mom are a low-income family, often struggling with the power being shut off and a lack of necessities, including new clothes for Kim. Given the way the pandemic has affected the economy the world over, many children may be in similar situations and Tough Like Mom gives them the opportunity to see themselves represented in Kim and her mom's resilience and strength. We have a Tough Like Mom kit to help inspire further conversation, including an activity designed by illustrator Carmen Mock. Have you ever been stumped by a family tree assignment? That's what happens to Ada. She can't figure out how to fit her family into a simple template. Ada is adopted and her assignment doesn't give her a space for her birth mom, nor can she figure out where her biological sister fits in, especially since they have different adoptive parents. Loosely based on author Sean Dixon's own experiences as a father, the family tree shines a light on non-traditional families, children who are adopted, conceived through IVF, have blended families, or are in foster care. Stunningly illustrated by new talent Lily Snowden Vine, who, fun fact, was the original voice of Peppa Pig, the family tree showcases how modern families are more diverse and welcoming than ever and will make non-traditional families feel seen and understood in new ways. Esme lives with her grandparents on the uppermost floor of the topmost best building. On Esme's birthday, her grandparents gift her with a beautiful guitar, but they didn't plan a party. No problem for Esme. She sets out to invite everyone else from her building and plans herself the best fiesta ever. Out today, Esme's Birthday Conga Line is the first installment in a new chapter book series from debut author Lourdes Heyer, vividly brought to life by best-selling illustrator Marissa Valdez. Esme has such a bright, authentically childlike voice, and the sprinkling of Spanish words throughout the text make this the perfect book to hand to bilingual children. It's also nice to see a child being brought up by her grandparents, and the other residents of the topmost best building represent different family structures too. I feel like the Missawasaga needs no introduction. 
Award-winning Cree author David A. Robertson's charming middle grade series reads like an indigenous chronicles of Narnia, focusing on two kids in the foster system, Morgan and Eli, who stumble upon a secret world and the unfinished attic of their new home. ASCII is populated by animals from indigenous stories, including Ochek, Fisher, and Eric, Squirrel. In the first book, The Barren Grounds, the two children and their new friends must save the starving community of Misawa from perpetual snow. The sequel, The Great Pear Bear, is a classic time traveling story. When Morgan and Eli cross the border between worlds, they realize they're in a past version of Misawa, one where they haven't met Ochek and Eric yet. In the upcoming third installment, The Stone Child, Morgan must race against the clock to save a near lifeless Eli. As Morgan and her friends journey deeper into the northern woods, they come across strange and horrifying creatures, but Morgan will do anything to save her brother. The series so far has been well received, with starred reviews, inclusion on best books lists, and the Barren Grounds being named as a 2021 Global Read Aloud. They're smart, clever, and full of Indigenous stories, traditions, and customs, and the momentum never slows down. Give the Missoula Saga to fans of Percy Jackson and get ready for even more adventures with Morgan and Eli soon. We currently have educators' guides for the first two books and have a similar guide in progress for The Stone Child. The year is 1991. The first Gulf War has just broken out, and 12-year-old Mona Hassan finds herself immigrating from her home in Dubai all the way to Canada. Along the way, she stops in Pakistan for a summer with her cousins, arrives in Toronto before heading over to her new home in Halifax, falls in love, experiences some classic middle school drama, and pursues her dreams of being a feminist and a poet. The Secret Diary of Mona Hassan is an homage to Sue Townsend's Adrian Mole books, which Mona reads at one point, but the story is wholly original and inspired by debut author Salma Hussein's personal immigration story. Salma also grew up in Dubai and perfectly captures what it was like to be a child in the Middle East. She was moved to tell her story when her own kids asked her what her childhood was like, and Mona's charming and authentic voice will make her instantly relatable to modern day children. Real question, who doesn't love dinosaurs? Personally, I never grew out of my dinosaur loving phase and neither has Peter, the star of Peter Lee's Notes from the Field. 11 year old Korean Canadian Peter Lee has one goal in life, to become a paleontologist. But when his chance at a real life dinosaur expedition falls apart thanks to an ill-timed asthma attack, Peter starts to rethink his future. Not only, not only is he going through this crisis, but his genius kid sister, LB, won't leave him alone, and something's wrong with his grandmother, Hammy, but no one will tell him why she's getting so forgetful. Angela Ahn delivers a middle grade that's both funny and heartfelt. I like to compare Peter's relationship with his sister to Arthur and DW, adding humor when the story needs it, while the expectations of his parents and his affectionate observations of his Korean heritage will resonate with any second generation kid. There are also adorable spot illustrations by Korean American artist, Julie Kwan, and Peter's asthma plays an important role without being his only defining characteristic. A discussion guide is available to inspire readers to look deeper into Peter's story. 15-year-old Fawad loves basketball. He dreams of becoming the first Pakistani Canadian NBA player, but growing up in the rough part of Toronto's Regent Park area, those dreams feel like a long shot. Not to mention Fawad is still struggling with the death of his father, a neighborhood bully, and his best friend's involvement with the violent gang. Then he starts to fall in love with the girl at school who lives on the wealthy side of town, only to find out that his mother is trying to arrange a marriage between him and his cousin back in Pakistan. Debut author H.N. Khan infuses Wrong Side of the Court with his own experiences of growing up in that same Toronto neighborhood and using basketball as coping mechanism. He also explores the idea of balancing two different cultures with Fawad adapting to a Canadian way of life while going home to his mother's Pakistani cooking and visits to a local mosque. Originally released in hardcover in 2005, we're thrilled to be reissuing Swimming in the Monsoon Sea in a new paperback edition. The setting is 1980s Sri Lanka, and it is a season of monsoons. 14-year-old Amrith is being raised by his aunt and uncle after a family tragedy, but he's doing okay. In fact, he's planning on auditioning for his school's production of Othello. Then his cousin visits from Canada, and Amrith finds himself falling in love for the first time with this new boy. When it first came out, Swimming in the Monsoon Sea was, and continues to be, one of very few com coming-of-age YA novels to feature a character like Amrith, Sri Lankan, Canadian, queer. It won the Lambda Literary Award and was a finalist for the Governor General's Literary Award. Author Shyam Salvadurai drew from his own experiences growing up in Sri Lanka and moving to Canada in his late teens, and Amrith's coming of age continues to be a timely, relevant story for YA readers looking to diversify their shelves in more ways than one. You can find all of our activity kits and discussion guides on our website, tundrabooks.com, under book extras. 
That page is constantly being updated as we create extra content for each of our books and make sure to keep an eye out for our themed lists and catalogs throughout the year. We can also be found online and are always happy to chat. Please, please feel free to reach out to us on social media at Tundra Books or at Penguin Teen CA, visit our website, or send us an email at youngreaders at penguinrandomhouse.com. Thanks so much for tuning into our presentation. Thank you so much, Sam. And next we will hear from Michaela Steven. Michaela is the marketing coordinator at Second Story Press. She has an MA in English Literature from the University of Calgary and a publishing certificate from Centennial College. She's based in Toronto, Ontario, where she lives with her cat, Banana Loaf, which is one of the best names I've ever heard. Take it away, Michaela. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. And I loved hearing about all the other books and look forward to hearing some more. Uh, as Ronnie said, my name is Michaela and I'm the marketing coordinator at Second Story Press. My pronouns are she slash her. Here at Second Story Press, we publish diverse, inclusive feminist books that entertain, educate, and empower. So at first, I want to talk about a couple of our fall 2021 titles, including My Art, My World. This is a wonderful, unique picture book written and illustrated by Rita Winkler, a young woman living with Down syndrome. Rita shows us her love for the world through her great passion, making beautiful and fun works of art. It received a star review from Kirkus and excellent reviews in the Globe and Mail, Nip Magazine, and more. So here are a few spreads from My Art, My World, which I just love. Approaching her daily life with enthusiasm and humor, Rita rides public transit to her job working at a university coffee shop. She takes yoga and folk dance classes and enjoys drama and music at a day program. And she practices using sign language. She shows us the world as she sees it through her art, a place full of joy, love, and color. Rita is playful and cheeky in the book, making jokes with her mother and Uncle Mark. In this spread, Rita shows her annoyance with telemarketers and how she tries to deter them from calling. Rita shows her interactions with the world and how they inspire her art. One such piece is after her visit to New York City. My Art, My World is an excellent picture book that asks children's questions, asks children questions, spurs creativity, and invites conversation. Up next is Gaz, which is a dual language edition of the Silver Birch Express nominated title, The Train, by Jody Callahan, now in English and Mi'kmaq. The book was illustrated by Georgia Leslie and translated by Joe Wilmot. Just last week, it was announced that Gaz is a finalist for the Indigenous Voices Award in the published work in an Indigenous language category. Gaz tells the story of Ashley, a young girl who meets her great uncle by the old train tracks near the community in Nova Scotia. When she sees his sadness, he tells her of the day when he and the other children were taken to a residential school where their lives changed forever. Gaz and the Train have been praised by Kirkus, Publishers Weekly, the Toronto Star, Booklist, and more. Kirkus praised Georgia Leslie's artwork. Leslie's soft color palette and expressive characters blend beautifully with the story without lifting its heaviness. This is an intergenerational story of healing from trauma. The little girl has agency and makes the decision to do what she can in the story, emphasizing the compassion and resilience of children. Gaz handles difficult topics in a gentle way while allowing children and parents to enjoy the story in both languages. Up next, I'll get into some of our other brand new spring 2022 titles, which just came out last week on May 4th. First up is Runs with the Stars and Wajima Matun Anangana. We released both the English only edition and the dual language edition in English and Ojibwe at the same time. The books are co-written by Darcy Whitecrow and Heather O'Connor. They're illustrated by Lenny Tlishenko, and the dual language edition is translated by Kelvin Morrison. Runs with the Stars has been praised by Publishers Weekly and Open Book, and it was featured this week on CTV Year Morning. Both Darcy, Darcy Whitecrow and Heather O'Connor are doing several events together over the next few weeks while, both virtual and in person. With his partner, Kim, Darcy Wycro runs a nonprofit, Gray Raven Ranch, where they have been raising and caring for the Ojibwe horses for the last decade to help preserve the breed and the tradition of symbiotic interaction with the Ojibwe people. 
Darcy has recorded videos of the horses at the ranch to use at upcoming events for Run to the Stars to show children the actual horses he works with. This is a touching story about the Ojibwe horse, an endangered breed for the Ojibwe people of Lac La Croix. In Runs with the Stars, a young girl, a young child's favorite horse is about to give birth. While they wait, the child's grandfather tells the history of the Ojibwe horse, how it nearly went extinct, but then how the indigenous people brought it back. The indigenous horse continues to be endangered. Runs with the Stars with Jim and Mattoon and Anganan is an important story highlighting both the cons conservation of the breed and the relationship between indigenous people and animals. Next, we have Alina in a Pinch by Shanaz Nanji, an early reader chapter book. It's a perfect book for readers leaving picture books behind and ready to read on their own. Alina in a Pinch is a charming story about a young girl struggling at a new school and learning to be brave by embracing her heritage through food. As the only Afro-Indian kid in her class, Alina tries to fit in, but soon starts dealing with a lunchtime bully. Despite the bullying, Alina in a Pinch is such a sweet story, and Alina is a character you'll fall in love with. The book has been praised by Publishers Weekly, Open Book, and Like Runs with the Stars was just featured on CTV Your Morning. The book features black and white illustrations at the start of the chapters and occasionally throughout. This is a major title for social emotional learning elements. It highlights self-awareness, compassion, bullying, integrity, anxiety, and respect. After Alina is bullied at school about the food she eats, she has to learn to stand up for herself and be proud of her culture and heritage. The relationship between Alina and her grandmother is so special and the two bond over cooking. Publishers Weekly has praised Alina and Pitch, writing, Alina's relationship with Nanny is heartfelt and the protagonist's growing self-assuredness and perseverance will be a comfort for fellow new kids who see themselves in her struggles. One of my favorite aspects of the book is Alina's passion for cooking. As an aspiring chef, Alina starts her own cooking channel on YouTube, auditions to get on a cooking show. It's a contemporary story that young readers will enjoy. Our next book is the young adult novel, Wish Upon a Satellite by Sophie LaBelle. Lebe Sophie LaBelle is the internationally acclaimed artist and author of the popular webcomic, Assigned Mail. Wish Upon a Satellite tells the story of Ciel, a Brazilian Canadian non-binary trans teen, navigating the pressures and pitfalls of being a teenager. They deal with relatable conflicts, both timeless and modern, from having a crush on a friend, sexting for the first time, and concerns over the climate crisis, all while dealing with high school. It's a mesmerizing queer coming of age novel chock full of lovable characters. Fans of our previous books, Ciel and Ciel in All Directions will rejoice as they get to read about their favorite characters again in Wish Upon a Satellite. Although it follows the two middle grade novels, Wish Upon a Satellite does stand well on its own for new readers coming to the series. I love that the characters are aging with the books and growing up. The series is praised for showing trans characters and multiple within the friend group that doesn't focus on the character's transition or only dwell on challenging aspects of being trans. It shows these teens succeeding, living their lives and supporting each other. Before I finish, I'd also like to show off some of our upcoming fall 2022 titles. We have an ex exciting lineup, including The Case of the Rigged Race, the fourth installment in Michael Hutchinson's award-winning Michael Mighty Muskrat series, uh, a mystery series about Indigenous teens solving crimes and mysteries. Tada, A Story of Egg Donation is a lovely picture book about a young girl learning about her birth that destigmatizes egg donation and a way of, as a way of becoming a parent. We also have Hidden on the High Wire, another exciting Holocaust remembrance novel from the award-winning Kathy Kaser. Heroines, Rescuers, Rabbis, and Spies, a nonfiction title about unsung women of the Holocaust, and my favorite of the season, Phoenix Gets Greater, a gorgeous picture book from Marty Wilson Trudeau about a young gay two-spirit indigenous boy celebrating his identity with his family. So that's all for me. If you're curious about any of our titles or want to request digital or print copies, send me an email at Michaela at secondstorypress.ca. Thanks so much. Thank you, Michaela. Finally, we are going to hear from Sarah Dunn. Sarah is the publicity manager at Anik Press. Previously, she worked for companies including ECW Press, McClellan & Stewart, and Thomas Allen & Son. 
She is based in Stratford, Ontario, best known for its theater festival and also as the hometown of Justin Bieber. Take it away, Sarah. Thank you so much, Ronnie. And thank you to my fellow panelists. It's been really lovely hearing all about these books, which are just wonderful. I'm so thrilled to be here to talk about some of the titles we're bringing out uh, coming up in fall and also some recent titles. So uh, with that in mind, if I could go to the next slide, please. Um, and I'll even skip ahead to the next one. So the first title I'm going to talk about is My Name is Sajin Singh, which is coming out on August 16th. This is one of our lead titles for fall, and it is about Sajin, a dreamy little boy who loves his own name very much. Next slide, please. He's just learned to spell and he starts seeing his name everywhere that he looks. He sees it in the clouds and cereal and everywhere. Next slide, please. Excited for the first day of school, Sajin can hardly wait to meet his classmates and make new friends. But things take a turn when the teacher mispronounces his name as Sajin and he doesn't know if he should say anything. Sajin figures the teacher must have it right because she's an adult. It bothers him, but soon the other kids are calling him Sajin too, and so he decides that that must be how his name is pronounced when he's not at home. After trying to live with a different version of his name for a while and some conversations with his parents, Sajin learns that the meaning of his name, loving friend, changes when it's mispronounced. He then realizes the importance of reclaiming his name and embracing his identity and makes sure that going forward, everyone knows how to say it properly. This is a debut picture book for both the author and illustrator and is an authentic depiction of a Sikh Punjabi family. Next slide, please. Author Kaljinder Brakhor is, was, uh, is also a teacher and is working on creating an educator's guide for this book. She was inspired to write this story as she has a son named Sajin. Before naming him and finalizing the spelling, she canvassed a lot of her teacher friends about how they would pronounce it, and they all said Sajin. But when she took him to the doctor for immunizations, the medical staff called her son Sajin. This delightful book features joyous, colorful illustrations by Boston-based Samrath Kaur, who is also pas passionate about the subject matter as he related strongly to it um, based on his own upbringing. And as a fun fact, he's included a Pomeranian in the illustrations as a tribute to a childhood pet. The story is empowering and is certainly one that will resonate with young readers from all kinds of backgrounds who have experienced something similar. Next slide, please. We are very, very excited to be introducing a brand new series of early chapter books. Next slide, please. The When Kids. These books are for uh, readers ages six to nine. And the first two books in the series, The Secret of the Jade Bangle and The Power of the Pearl Earrings will both be released on October 18th. Each book in the series focuses on a different sibling in a Vietnamese Canadian family, The Wens. And so far there are three books planned for this series with the third scheduled for publication in spring 2023. These stories explore Vietnamese culture with elements of the supernatural, spirituality, and social justice woven in. Next slide, please. In book one, The Secret of the Jade Bangle, we meet organized and introspective Anne, the eldest Wen sibling, who is age nine. Anne realizes the Jade Bangle her recently deceased grandmother left to her gives her strength to stand up for herself when a ballet teacher directs microaggressions and outright racism at her the only kid in the ballet class. While this is happening, Anne works through her discomfort with the situation and her grief over the loss of her beloved Grandma Noi by learning to cook some of her favorite Vietnamese food with the help and encouragement of her grandmother's spirit. In book two, The Power of the Pearl Earrings, Liz, the spontaneous and fierce middle Wen series, middle Wen sibling, pardon me, age eight, finds that her own gift from their grandmother leads her to understand the importance of her place within the family and among her peers when the new popular boy in school tries to exclude her from everything just because she's a girl. After initially feeling displaced and defeated, a strong connection with her ancestors helps Liz reclaim the warrior spirit that has always allowed her to excel in whatever she's interested in. Things like Taekwondo and coding. Next slide, please. 
This is the first book by Linda Trin, who was inspired to write these stories when she couldn't find early chapter book readers or early chapter books for her kids that featured characters of Vietnamese descent. Next slide, please. Uh, the strong engaging writing includes messages about empathy, identity, and self-acceptance packed with lots of social emotional learning connections. Next slide, please. The next title is She Holds Up the Stars, which will be released on August 16th. This is a coming of age middle grade novel for ages 10 to 14. It's the story of Misko, an Anishinaabe girl who has been sent to live with her grandma back on the reservation for the summer after living in the city with her aunt for several years. While initially reluctant to return to the reservation, Misko almost immediately feels a sense of connection to the people and the land, and most notably, to a horse on a neighboring farm who she feels a deep connection with. She knows that there is some sort of link between this animal and her missing mother. Through her grandmother's teaching and experiences, Misko learns more about her culture and community as well as her own family's history. The story delves into Indigenous language, culture, and storytelling, and introduces the reality of missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls, and racism in a way that is appropriate for middle grade readership. Next slide, please. The author, Sandra Laurent, is an accomplished arts leader, the founder of Red Sky Performance, and the host of Red Talks, a series that celebrates ideas and performances from Indigenous artists and leaders. Next slide, please. The next title I'd like to tell you about is A House Unsettled, which is a YA horror novel for ages 14 plus by Trin Delaney. 17 year old Asha is ready for the fresh start her mom Tracy promises when they move to a Victorian mansion passed down from Tracy's Aunt Aggie in a small town far from the city Asha calls home and far from the painful reminders of her dad's recent incarceration. The immediate connection she makes with her new neighbor, Cole, seems like a sign that this fresh start is possible. But soon, Ash's optimism is overshadowed by strange and increasingly terrifying occurrences within the crumbling old house's walls. Footsteps stalking the halls, a persistent chill, cold hands around her neck in the middle of the night. The escalating tension with her mother following the arrival of her toxic boyfriend Increasingly strange apparitions in the house and revelations about past entanglements between Cole and Ash's families start to make Ash a question not only the possibility that things might be better here, but also whether she, Tracy, and even Cole could be in danger. As Ash becomes more convinced that ghosts have a hold on the house and anyone who enters it, the tension with her mom and mom's boyfriend escalates and Cole withdraws leaving Asha alone to try to break the cycle of violence that holds them all in its supernatural grip. Set in rural New Brunswick in the 2020s, A House Unsettled is a compelling emotional ghost story that explores the concept of haunting as it relates to intergenerational trauma, queerness, race, colonialism, violence, and injustice, and how we can learn to break harmful cycles through love and resistance and move forward while still acknowledging the past. This is the debut novel from Trin Delaney who brings an authentic intersectional perspective. Trin is of black loyalist and settler heritage and they are lesbian and gender queer. Now, next slide. I'll talk, oh, the next slide again, sorry, I missed one. <laughs> uh, I'll talk briefly about some of the titles we published recently that uh, really speak to the theme of Windows and Mirrors. So the first one is The Words in My Hands. This YA novel for ages 13 to 16 received a number of starter views and the ALA Schneider, Schneider Family Award. Pardon me. Next slide. Um, it is set in a near future that feels creepily authentic and realistic. Not so far that it feels out of reach as the environmental collapse and political corruption aren't hard to imagine for us today. Piper, the protagonist, is 17, smart, artistic, and a bit rebellious. She's figuring out her place in the world. Born hearing, she became deaf at three. She meets Marley, her first real love interest, who introduces her to the signing deaf community. This book is part coming of age, part call to action, but is far from weak. It is insightful, hopeful, and empowering. Like the protagonist, the author is deaf, so there's a real sense of authenticity to the book. Uh, Asphyxia, the author, is also an artist, uh, and the book is told in an art journal format that appeals to the YA audience. Next slide, please. And the next one after that. Um, 
there is a video embedded here in the presentation. So if you download the slides, you can see this video of asphyxia talking about the challenges of writing about being deaf. And uh, she is from Australia, so she communicates using Auslan. And there are some back matter information about the differences between Auslan and ASL. Next slide, please. The next title is a middle grade graphic novel called Rabbit Chase. This is recommended for ages eight to 12 and it is an Anishinaabe take on Alice in Wonderland. Next slide, please. The main character, Amy, is a non-binary middle schooler who is alienated from their classmates. While on a school trip, they are consumed by a video game and wander off, soon finding themselves in a world populated by trickster rabbits and dark water spirits. Next slide, please. Rabbit Chase takes the colonial tropes of the original story and turns them on their head. It was also important to author Elizabeth Laponce and illustrator Casey Oster to create a book that would be inclusive of kids who might not have previously been able to see themselves in classic stories. It also shares indigenous worldviews in an exciting and accessible way for those who aren't familiar with them. Next slide, please. This next title is Living with Viola, and it actually came out in October 2021, so please pardon the typo. Uh, this is another middle grade graphic novel, and it is for ages 9 to 12. This one deals with mental health and cultural differences. Next slide, please. Libby is having trouble fitting in as the new girl at school, and Viola, the physical representation of Libby's anxiety, isn't helping. Viola always at her side, reminding Livy that she isn't good enough and that no one likes her. Livy fights back by burying herself in books, drawing, and cooking with her mom. When Livy strikes up a friendship with a tight-knit group of girls, she is able to push Viola away, hoping that Viola's days are numbered. But tensions arise and Viola proves her power is as strong as ever. Only when Livy finally figures out to how to ask for help does she learn to live with Viola. Next slide, please. Rosanna Fung draws on her own early experiences with anxiety and the pressures of growing up as a child of Chinese immigrant parents to craft a charming, deeply personal story. The book also, also shares a lot of themes with the movie Turning Red and would likely appeal to the film's fans. Next slide, please. Uh, now in paperback, we have Salma the Syrian Chef, which is a picture book for ages four to seven. Uh, Salma is a newcomer who with determination, creativity, and love manages to bring her community together when she goes on a mission to create her mother's favorite Syrian dish. This book is coming out in paperback this fall. Uh, next slide, please. The uh, this is Welcome to the Cypher, a picture book for ages four to seven, and it is all about the joy uh, that can be found in rap. Next slide, please. Uh, and Cody Dill is also an anti-racist educator with a passion for social justice. Next slide, please. And the next one after that, the final title is Abuelita and Me. This book is by Leonardo Carranza. It's a debut picture book that features a young girl who experiences racism towards her grandmother when they're out in the city and learns to uh, lean on her grandmother, but uh, never fully get over the racism. Uh, this is very much inspired by author Leonardo Carranza's upbringing. She was born in El Salvador and raised in Toronto. And this book also exists in Spanish language as Abuelita EO. And next slide, please. There's some of the colorful in illustrations by Mexican uh, illustrator, Rafael Mayani, who lives in Vancouver. Next, please. That's it. Thank you so much for listening to me. It's been such a pleasure to be a part of this event. And thank you very much, Sarah. And another big thank you to all of today's wonderful panelists. Tomorrow, all attendees will receive an email containing links to today's slide presentation, title list, certificate of completion, and video recording. For more about Booklist webinars, be sure to visit booklistonline.com slash webinars, where you can view archives of past webinars and register for upcoming ones like those you see here. Not yet a subscriber? Pair the print reading experience with the convenience of online access at booklistonline.com 
and lock and print online digital and archive access by taking advantage of this offer to get booklist for $75. Patron friendly, librarian approved, and free with a booklist subscription. Booklist Reader, Booklist's new digital only magazine highlighting diverse readers' advisory recommendations for all ages has arrived. To see and share the latest issue, visit booklistsonline.com slash reader dash issues. And we are very excited to share that. Booklist, Booklinks, and Booklist Reader recently joined the Overdrive Magazine program in partnership with Zinio and are available for your patrons to read in Libby. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. One more huge thank you to our panelists and our sponsors, Simon & Schuster, Tundra Press, Second Story Press, and Anik Press. This concludes today's webinar.